Yes. Uh, on, um, so here uh, this week in California at, at Saudis High School, a 16-year-old student. Oh, so uh, heartbreaking. Yeah, killed, killed, killed two, two, two students. Um, so Mary, I was there reporting on the ground, and many parents are asking what could be done. Whether is it metal detectors, is it more mental health counselors? Do you think Big Pharma is playing uh, a role in, in, in what's going on with, with mental health and, and young, younger children? Now, I, I'm the parent to two young boys, and my son's school just had its first active shooter drill, and my son is four years old. And so you have to ask yourself, is this where our country is, and, and how can we improve it? I looked at what happened in Santa Clarita. It's heartbreaking, man. I'm sorry you had to report on that and see what was happening in the families and communities. As a parent, uh, it's heart-wrenching. And to me, we have to attack the epidemic of gun violence at every level. So you start at the top with common sense gun laws that most Americans at this point should have, agree should have been passed years ago when you break the stranglehold of the NRA. Uh, but in this particular case, some of those laws would not have influenced this particular shooting because this was not an assault weapon. This was not someone who's going to run afoul of a background check. I don't believe this particular uh, individual had any record to speak of. And so then you have to go deeper. What is the chain of events that leads to gun violence? The last steps are procuring a gun and then using it, which are terrible, tragic steps. But we all know that there are many steps that happen beforehand, including in this case. So I'm talking about what's going on in families, what's going on in schools, what's going on in communities. And we have to face facts that 96% plus of the shooters we're talking about are boys or men. We have a massive failure in our society to help turn our boys into strong, healthy men. And as a parent to two boys, I see this, and I can see that having the wrong boy in the wrong school can lead to tragic outcomes, generally for the boy and his family, but every once in a while, those outcomes can become externalized and tragic to others. So we have to try and rebuild from the ground up our families, our schools. We have to make our schools so they're not assembly lines with these standardized tests that kids all feel like they're just on, a, uh, on a, an assembly line moving forward. They're just like a, an interchangeable widget. We have to have an education system that treats our kids as individuals who learn differently, who might be at different stages, that they're not all going to be at the same point in their development at age 12 or 13 or 14. And this is a very high bar for schools. Most schools right now do not have the expertise or resources to be able to help our kids, boys in particular, manage some of these issues. And that's what we can influence that might have helped prevent this particular tragedy. I would invest in social and emotional learning in every school, in managing technology, because one of the things that we also do not talk about is that the mental health crisis among young people is hand in hand, is lockstep with smartphone adoption and use of social media apps. And as a child, I was a very shy, introverted kid, but when I went home and I shut the door, my classmates were not in the room with me. You know what I mean? It's like you shut the door and then you could read a book and get lost in your own world. And it's not like you have to worry about what people are thinking about you or saying to you. But our kids today, their peers are with them everywhere they go. So the way we prevent this tragedy, we start with the guns, yes, but we have to go deeper and start trying to reconstitute our families, our schools, our approach to mental health, our approach to our educational system, and our approach to technology, particularly in the hands of kids, minors, and teenagers. Andrew, uh, woman.